few weeks ago, one of my clients rang me in a bit of a panic. And he was panicking because his gamified CRM project was working too well. And more on that in a bit. Myself, I've always been highly motivated by feedback and recognition of all the motivations we talk about. In fact, as far back as I can remember, I got great feedback from my parents, my teachers, from the video games I played. Probably back then when I was very young, that's when I got addicted to feedback and recognition. In fact, since then it's skewed my life choices, so I'm more likely to take the option with the cool job title, the uh, great feedback, and less about the money, to my wife's ongoing despair. Fifteen years ago, I got involved in the CRM industry. So customer relationship management systems, they have a simple job to do, which is to help you look after your prospects, turn those into sales and customers, help you look after your customers, and turn them into repeat customers. But they're actually pretty big and complicated, uh, but they do a lot of cool stuff to, to achieve that. And we like to practice what we preach, and so we install the biggest and best internally in our own company and uh, try to use all the coolest, geekiest functions within it, partly to benefit our company and partly because we might have to demonstrate them at any moment. Um, but what I noticed over the years was that really uh, less and less features got used by me and my team. And in fact, at clients, that, that process was even quicker. So there was something about CRMs that isn't working or wasn't working. And when I investigated, what I found was that quite often the, the users were too scared of the system. It was so big and complicated. They were scared they'd make a mistake in it. Some were even scared they'd break it. They're pretty robust systems, really. Also, if they're stopping using it, it's obviously not giving them something back to say why it's a benefit to them. That sort of feedback thing. So I started looking for a better way to do it. And at the time I started looking, I happily came across Kevin Wehrbach's brilliant gamification Coursera course. As soon as I started doing that course, I started thinking about the video games I've been playing and the CRMs, the big complicated CRMs. And I went, actually, video games, they're big and complicated, but they're still fun to use. CRMs, they're big and complicated and, anyone? No. Not fun to use. Okay. Uh, so I started looking for a gamified CRM. And I was really lucky because immediately I found a CRM called Zermo which was built from the ground up around gamification concepts. And so we downloaded it, installed it, started running it internally. I started experimenting on my staff. With the old CRM, we used to spend a good two days training people up on it to be, uh, to be comfortable with it and use it. With Zermo, I just gave the new users a username and a password. And to be honest, within about two hours, they were generally as comfortable using it as two days of training on the old system. It's a big difference. That was the first thing I noticed. So we quickly became the first UK partner for Zermo CRM. Um, started selling it. In fact, I sold off the telecoms division of the company, so we had more resources to go big on gamified CRM. And what's interesting to me now is, that was back in 2013, I've now had clients using a gamified CRM for over two years, which means we've got lots of stats about what they actually use in terms of the game mechanics in it. I'm going to tell you about those. The first thing I wanted to sh share with you is actually what are the game mechanics in the system. I'm going to whiz through this because most of you are really good at gamification. And the first thing is actually, from an aesthetic point of view, it's very minimalist in design. It tries to hide as many options while staying pretty, so people aren't too scared of it. It quickly enables you to customize it. So you can customize colors, customize textures within the system, and the more you use the system, actually you unlock more colors and textures. One of my members of staff was a fanatical, and is a fanatical, Brighton and Hove Albion football club supporter. And he quickly changed the CRM colors to match his club's colors, and he was very happy. But what we had to do, well, what he did then was try and change it for everybody else, so I had to put a stop to that. Um, there's an easily customizable dashboard, which um, users can customize, more customization, and they can actually build multiple dashboards because we ha all have generally more than one role to play in our companies these days. Pretty much the first feedback you get from the system is badges. We've heard a lot about badges today. Um, badges for all sorts of things, from simple, simple things like logging in. Because yeah? actually that's a thing we want to reward to more complicated ones like doing searches and creating reports and things like that. And in fact, you can brag about it and post it to your profile within the system. 
that was my little test to see if the video worked. It did. That's good. Uh, the next thing you'd see is going up levels. Every activity in the system has points attached to it, which we can track and count. And uh, it gets harder and harder to achieve, almost the Fibonacci-like sequence, if anyone was in Michael Wu's uh, workshop yesterday. Then there's a virtual currency within the system. So you get coins randomly appearing, which you can click on and collect. You get rewarded with coins when you go up levels. You get rewarded with coins when you uh, complete collections. And it adds a new sensory aesthetic, a lovely ka sound when you click on one. In fact, I've seen my staff pause their work, turn up the speakers, then collect it, then get back on with their work, and then seeing the other staff perk up and start working a bit harder, because they want one too. It always brings a smile to my face. There's also virtual goods. At first, you think these appear at random. They're, they're fairly random selection. But actually, they're appearing to encourage you to explore the system. So the idea behind that is that the more you explore, the more comfortable you get with the features, the more likely you are to use those features. And they also play a nice little tune. Um, those collections that I talked about briefly earlier with coins, um, takes on the digital virtual goods to another level. Quite difficult to achieve, completing one of the collections, but it encourages you to further explore the system. And when you uh, cash in a collection, you get more coins for your bucket. What do you do with those coins? There's a redeemable reward section. So um, you can turn coins into real rewards. Now, this bit comes empty to all clients. Different clients use it in different ways. Some haven't put any rewards in. Uh, generally, they're split into personal rewards, like experiences, vouchers to spend, team-based rewards, that, uh, like team days out, or upgrades for the office, and time off rewards, like uh, finishing work an hour early, or even having a whole day off. There is a leaderboard. Um, it defaults to a weekly view. It's tracking just all your activities. There is a monthly and overall total score and leaderboard as well. Um, what we find is this actually really only works for the first few weeks in, in onboarding. And after that, people tend to ignore it, mostly. Everything you do in the system has points attached to it. And some of those are allocated to soft skills. And you can see this in the feedback. So if I realize I'm getting feedback that I'm good at lead generation, Perhaps I next want to develop myself by working on my time management skills. There is a game dashboard so that you can go and find it, get feedback about all those different game mechanics. Then there's another level, social mechanics. These are designed to make you feel part of a bigger team and to help you collaborate more. There's an activity feed. This is auto-generated from all the business work that's going on within the system. There's a what's going on feed. This will have all the brags about going up levels, getting new badges, any personal status updates, and you can comment on other people's achievements. There's a conversations tool. Now, this is actually for building impromptu teams for brainstorming about certain aspects. And then there's missions. You can create a mission, uh, describe a reward for it, and then the system will promote it out to all the other users. And only a volunteer can, can take on a mission. Your system won't let you force someone to take on one of these missions, so you're volunteering for it. It can't stop you doing it outside the system. Oh, I started by saying I had a client who was panicking. So this is a client who we started working with just over a year ago. They are, in essence, a telesales company. They've got some senior sales, sales people in each geographic area who go out and meet clients and sell to them. They've got some tele sales people that sell direct but also generate leads for uh, those senior sales people. And we originally put in Zermo uh, to help them with onboarding their users as a CRM. That was the key thing we sold, sold them. But not long after we started working with them, they got taken over. And their sales targets got tripled by the new owners, but with no promise of extra resources or extra staff. So the sales manager came to me and said, perhaps we could look at putting some redeemable rewards in the system to really help, me, help us achieve these new ridiculous targets. No one thought they could achieve them. Um, no money, no challenge there then. So uh, 
I did some research on the users, what would motivate them. I start off my photo focus groups by saying there's no money. Money will not be one of the rewards, which gets that out of the way. Otherwise, it's always the top of the request list. Um, and once again, it broke down into personal experiences, team-based experiences, and time off. In this case, we had no money, so we, and to keep it simple and so we could roll it out quickly, we just added five simple time off rewards to the incentive scheme. Half an hour off, an hour off, two hours off, half a day off, and a day off. With a simple rule that you could only take one hourly one a day and one daily one a week, so that pretty much there'd always be people in the office to take any income inquiries. Yeah. Um, we did a little launch event to get the staff excited, and then I left them to it for a while. When I got back to them after that, the answer that came back to me was target smashed. In fact, they've hit their tripled sales targets for three months in a row. And um, the, first, the first person to hit a day off did that within six weeks. And uh, our expectations were actually it would take at least three months for someone to hit that, assuming that they hadn't even taken an hour off or half hour off along the way. In fact, I'd used the same rewards in my own company the previous year, and the most popular thing was in finishing work an hour earlier. Um, and no one had ever actually managed to save up for a day off. So this was completely different results. In fact, now they tell me every single member of staff has earned enough coins to take a day off. Some have taken the day off. Some are waiting for the right day when they feel they really need it. And the reason he was panicking was actually that he um, had this vision that the directors would say, we've got a really successful branch here. Let's go down and see what they're doing. And then there'd be no one there. <laughs> so uh, it shouldn't be too much of a problem, because obviously the coins are getting harder to earn as they go up levels, and, and, it, and the rate of earning is slowing down. But they're still trying to game the system and get as many days off as possible. A quick whip through the statistics. I mentioned we've got some statistics. These are going to be through um, from all our UK CRM clients. They're in different industries of different sizes. I've got a lovely, huge chart. Um, but my key thing here is the main thing we noticed was a, a metric that we use most of all is average points earned per month in the system. And this showed me that actually anyone earning over about 10,000 points a month is a highly engaged user of the system. Anyone earning over about 5,000 points a month is a normal CRM user. Anyone under that is either part-time or needs some help, some extra training. There's something not right. These are the top 10 users of all my clients in the UK. I'm only number 18 on this list. Shocking. Our top user, she's only been using it for four months. She's highly engaged with all the different game mechanics. Her manager is a very happy person. In fact, she works for that company with the time off rewards. I like this example. Here we actually have a director of a company, second in the list. Now, to be honest, this is because he's a workaholic, not because he's into the gamification. He does so much work, he gets loads of points. In fact, sometimes he even says, can we turn off the gamification? It's getting in my way. But what stops him turning it off is that number four in the list works for him. In fact, Jeanette there is the only part-timer on the list. She's so inspired by the fact that her boss uses the system and she feels able to engage with it that she's incredibly productive too. In fact, Simon says that Jeanette is now worth 1.2 Jeanettes to him because of the CRM. Laura here has the most badges. What this means is that she's used far more of the system. She's your go-to person in that organization for any help on any different aspect, something you haven't used in the CRM for a while. She got a promotion offer the day these stats went out to her boss. My favorite statistic here, Jen has the most coins of anyone in the whole of our list of users, but works for a company that has no redeemable rewards. She's actually enjoying clicking the coin and getting the ka-chink sound so much that she has more coins than anybody else. The aesthetic and sensory extra bits of that coin clicking really motivate her to enjoy that part of the system. And I like it too. So where to next in sales gamification and CRM gamification? For me, one of the things uh, game, video games do really well is they want you to play the game again and again. And one of the ways they make that fun is by getting you to play it slightly differently. Maybe they ask you to do it with a different strategy, give you different advantages, different resources, maybe an extra disadvantage. And you play the game again, again and again. You don't truly master the game until you've played it a few different ways. 
You translate that over to a CRM system where you can offer them different tracking on doing, uh, you know, running different sales scripts, making calls at different times of day, targeting different markets, different sizes of company, get them to play it again a different way. Pretty soon your salesperson can guarantee a win. If they get bored, they can play it a different way. Yeah. Um, and they'll master sales. Also, the fact that you can potentially take it, target a new vertical market, play it different ways, means that your salespeople are less likely to get bored, which means we should avoid salesperson burnout of your best salespeople. And you get on, uh, and they should last with your company much longer. So to conclude, I think, and I think we can show that CRMs can be made more effective through fun. I think all CRMs should be made more fun. And I think you should go away and please make your CRMs more fun. Thank you.